Welcome to Life with Bella. Good to be with you all again. The topic that we have for today is soul healing, healing of our soul. By soul, I mean our personality, our emotions, our thought process and our will. Man is essentially a tripartite being. We have a spirit, soul and our body. The soul uh, is uh, connected between the spirit and our body. Third John 1-2 brings about this connection. It reads, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as or even as your soul prospers. Wow. Just as or even as essentially means to the degree of to the degree of or in proportion to or according to. So can you see the, uh, the connection between the soul and the health? God wants us to be prosperous. Prosperous essentially means to succeed. The, the root word brings about this meaning. It says to move forward as in a travel, to be able to reach their destination. So, success or prosperity in God's eyes is being able to flow in life or to have an abundant life, to be able to reach our calling, to reach our, uh, to fulfill our destiny. So, that is prosperity. So, the soul plays a vital part in our in the fulfillment of our calling even though you may be born again right even though the the spirit is in you the soul can be a hindrance it can prevent us from accomplishing what we are called to do let me ask you a couple of questions and see if uh, this is an area that you need healing from. Do you feel devalued or unaccepted or unloved? Have you been traumatized by an incident and unable to get over it? Have you taken offense at someone's words or comments? Are you trying hard to forgive someone who has unjustly accused you? Are you experiencing or going through grief? Have you been betrayed or rejected? Or are you struggling with temptation in some area of your, your life? Friend, I pray that the words that would be shared uh, this half hour would bring a healing, a deliverance in each one of these areas that I just mentioned. So shall we pray? Shall we come before God with that kind of... A, a desire and expectation that today is going to be a day of freedom for us okay I know uh, the baggage these wounds can cause in our life let's pray Father God I pray that even as we have brought this topic to the forefront show us the importance of soul healing Father and I pray Lord the, the words that are spoken would bring healing, restoration and deliverance in the areas that we are struggling in, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the provision that has been given through your Son, Jesus, and also the Word, and also the Holy Spirit, Father, who is our comforter. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and Amen. Normally when we talk, we use the word uh, spirit and soul interchangeably. But when we see the Bible, there is a distinct separation between the spirit and the soul. Hebrews 4.12 reads, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword 
it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our heart. Can you see the difference that's being made, the soul and spirit? And I love this verse, it also brings the body, joints and marrow. Another verse uh, kind of brings all these uh, three facets of man is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It reads, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely or wholly, and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God sees these three sides of us. I always think of the uh, the tabernacle, the the outer court, the inner court, and the the most holy place, which is the if you see the parallel, it is the the body, the soul, and the the spirit. When we are born again, it is the the spirit part of us, the the inner part of us, which was born again, which was made anew. As the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That is where we experience the new birth. There was no change in the soul or the body. So it is very important a renewal or a change happens or a, a cleansing or a sanctification happens in the soul realm. Uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 reads, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Only the spirit transformation will not suffice to be able to enjoy the abundant life that God wants us to have. Like I told you, the soul will steer us in the direction. It has the ability to steer us in the right direction or in the wrong direction. Unless we align our soul to the word of God, it will take us in the wrong direction. And uh, only when you renew your mind, you will be able to know the perfect will of God. Renewal essentially means aligning your thinking to God's way of thinking. Bible says, my ways are not your ways, right? In the natural realm. But it is possible for you to Know the ways of God. How do you know the ways of God? The word gives a beautiful access to the mind of Christ. This chain that needs to take place is further explained uh, in Mark chapter 2 verse 22. It reads, No one pours new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. Wow. So, the the new wine, which is uh, the new spirit, right? And the, the new wine skin is the, the soul part of it. It is possible for it to be renewed so that you can experience and know what is that God has for our lives? Let me bring in the connection between the soul and body. Um, let me uh, bring it forth with a couple of verses. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 reads, A peaceful heart leads to healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. Psalm 15 13 reads, a glad heart makes a happy face. A broken heart crushes the spirit. Proverbs 17.22 reads, 
A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So can you see the connection between uh, our soul and the body? What we call as a psychosomatic disorders, right? Which the medical field have discovered. God's word is explaining uh, the connection. Now that we have seen the importance of a soul to our body and also to be able to experience an abundant life, uh, to be able to know the will of God, let me see how we can bring about the soul restoration. One, trace where the wounds came from. Look back on the words that hurt you or the weak areas where you are constantly being wounded or the ways that took you to where you are. James 1, 14 reads, Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own desire, by their own evil desire and enticed. This verse makes it very clear uh, it is our lust that conceives sin. So essentially, sin is conceived in the emotions. And emotions, as we just saw, is part of our soul. So if you don't want to sin, we should work on our emotions. We should learn to control our emotions. Also the Bible says as a man thinketh so is he. Whatever you are indulging in your thought process, whatever space that you are giving in your mental real estate will steer you your life in that direction. So it's very imperative that you Put in that space only things that are life-giving, which will take you in the right direction. That's why the Bible says, whatever that is true, whatever that is noble, whatever is lovely, right? Think on those things. There will be times um, Satan will tempt you with thoughts. He is a liar. He's a deceiver. So we need to guard our minds from the uh, infiltration of these negative thoughts. This is something only you can do. Somebody else cannot do it for you. So friend, if you want to see changes in your life, if you want to see a life uh, that is prosperous, which will move forward, which will take you to the place you're called to be, then work on your thoughts and your emotions. And then your will plays a vital role. You can choose to work on these or not. Okay? Secondly, trust Him. By trust I mean, know, get to know Him. You need to know the nature of God and His methodology. Many times we have been fed with the wrong ideology. The wounds or hurts which we are experiencing are sent by God to teach us a lesson. Friend, these wounds are our hurts come from our personality. Like I told you, there will be areas that we are um, very sensitive to. So, time and again, when we are hurt in the same area, we begin to bleed. The heart of God is restoration. 
Psalm 23 reads, He restores my soul. That means restoration is bring back. To bring healing to your soul. Isaiah 42, 3 reads, He will not crush the weakest to read or put a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who has been wronged. Friend, God's heart is to, to bring healing to even the tiniest or the, the, the smallest area of hurt that you can experience. I love uh, Psalm 34, 18, which reads, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Psalm 147, 3 reads, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Friend, reach out to Him. God's heart is able to bring healing to your soul. It is not upon us to set matters right. Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And Isaiah 35 says, the recompense the, or the compensation comes from God. And He will come and save you. So anytime we are hurt, the immediate response, one, is to feel sorry for ourselves. And also, we want to find a way to get even. Right? That only increases the difficulty. God says, let me handle it. So when we handle it, we are not giving room for God to handle the situation. Thirdly, the word, his word is a source of healing. Psalm 19.7 reads, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. Another version reads, reviving the soul. So, to be able to bring restoration, you need to meditate on His word. You cannot take the thought or the hurts by yourself. You can only replace a thought with another thought. And the replacement is by the word of God. In John chapter 6, verse 63, we read, The words that I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Wow. God's word is spirit, just as God is spirit. Right? So, if you, if you want healing for your soul, His word is capable of doing it. Even as Hebrews 4.12 reads, right? The word of God is effective, which means it is capable of producing result. And it is active. It is operative. It is alive to penetrate your soul and your spirit. The word of God created the universe. The word of God brought uh, Lazarus to life. The word of God brought the centurion's uh, son to life. Jeremiah one twelve reads, I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So, use his word, the promises from his word, to get out of the situation that you are in. If you are in a pit, use his word to come out of it. I want to bring this point which was very instrumental uh, for me uh, for finding healing of my soul when I was experiencing grief as I lost my uh, mom. I wrestled with uh, the sorrow for uh, closer to a year. I would attend grief share programs to uh, understand uh, how Others were handling pain. Or even to, to know uh, the brevity of life. The, I, I could sense that I was slowly sinking. But I didn't want to sink further and further. And 
how much I was trying to come out of that uh, uh, that sense of uh, desperation or pain, I was finding uh, I was not really moving forward. I remember this one day when I heard this message uh, from Isaiah 53, 3-5. Let me read this for you. It says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words, griefs and sorrows, really hit uh, the core of me. And I found deliverance then. How did I find deliverance? When I realized that someone else, that is Jesus, has taken my griefs and my sorrows and paid for it, I realized what was the need for me to bear that? Friend, I, I can tell you, even today I remember that the, the transition was like uh, from night to day. The deliverance enabled me to look back on her life, not to sorrow, but to, uh, to be thankful and grateful for her life the influence and the impact she has had in my life. The, the value of the word is explained well in James chapter 1 verse 21. It says, Accept the word that he has planted in your hearts, which is able to save you. Okay? And Ephesians 5.26 reads, Be cleansed by the washing of the word. At times when you are feeling guilty or you feel that uh, you have done something wrong and you are not able to get over the thought. Go back to his word and his promises. Uh, the next point is talk to yourself. I love this point because you have the ability to come out of the doldrums. Psalm 103 reads, uh, Bless the Lord. O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Friend, if there are, if you're experiencing times when you are feeling a bit low, that you feel that you come to a point where you've lost hope or the, the energy or the vitality to pursue something, go back and look at the things God has done for you. List all the times that God has been faithful and enabled you to come through. Forget not all his benefits. List them. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6 we read, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Friend, you can talk to yourself. You can encourage yourself. Uh, Psalm 42 verse 11 reads, My soul, why are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. What is it saying? When you are feeling low, maybe you can stand in front of your mirror and encourage yourself. Talk to yourself and say, Bella, if, if I were to say, this is how I will say, Bella, why are you feeling sad? Don't you remember the time when you encountered a similar problem? that God was faithful, he encouraged you with his word, or he guided you to a higher plane, or he sent someone to encourage you. 
to look up to him. Don't look at yourself. Okay? These are some of the ways that you can uh, talk to yourself to come out of the situation that you are experiencing. The next point is, turn to the body, the body of believers, the church, to find encouragement. Proverbs 16.24 reads, Gracious words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. How many times uh, somebody's words have lifted you up or your words have encouraged someone and given them hope. So your words are powerful. Don't underestimate the power of your word to restore somebody's soul. It can be your child, it can be your spouse, it can be your co-worker or even your neighbor. Um, James 5.16 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. This is another inbuilt system that God has given where the church can look up to one another for their healing. One other point, maybe let me just touch upon, knowing the truth. John 8 says uh, in 31 and 32, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Only the truth can liberate us from the prison. When I say truth, uh, the truth of Knowing how God sees you is very important. We tend to look at our flaws and our weaknesses and we judge ourselves and condemn ourselves. Or we feel guilty for uh, an error that we have made. And we, uh, the guilt and condemnation spirals and uh, sucks the life out of us. And... uh, I've seen many people enter into depression because of that. The truth is, God has paid for any of these that you are experiencing. Even the worst sin that you committed, God has paid for it. And you need to appropriate it. You need to say, Lord, I receive the forgiveness that is in your son Jesus. And I repent of my ways, my old way of thinking. And I put my faith on you. Know the truth of how God views you. He sees you as uh, the righteous person in Christ. And also, um, uh, the, the areas that you think you're weak, God will be seeing that as an area of strength. Gideon was hiding, but... When the angel of the Lord appeared, this is the way the angel addressed Gideon. The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Wow. We can never know ourselves rightly. We can know ourselves only from the word of God. So, find scripture verses which talk about your identity in Christ then you can see the new you as how God is seeing you. And that will bring hope and and encouragement to your soul. Okay? So go back, watch this video, list all the uh, points, the ways I gave you by which you can encourage yourself, bring healing and restoration to your soul. Write to me, the things that God spoke to you. If there's any truth that he spoke to you, hold on to it tight. Write it so that you can use it to come out of your state of depression or discouragement. Okay? Shall we close with a word of prayer? Father God, I want to thank you for your word. Thank you that there is no situation that we cannot come out of. Thank you for that hope. We love you, Father. Encourage each one of the hearers 
meet their needs. I pray for healing of their soul, for their body and for each one of the requests that they have in front of them. Let there be a breakthrough, Father, in their families. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Love you all. Thank you for being with me. And uh, do subscribe and do share this uh, message with your friends. And uh, if you like to partner with us, I'd uh, like for you to come on board. You can go to our website, Bella Victor Ministries dot com or lifewithbella dot com to to know what are the events that we have um, around us okay love you all god bless you thank you